Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and in this video, we're going to revisit the Infinite Baffle series. Some people have some questions about it, and we want to make sure that we go over those so that you know exactly what type of subwoofer or speaker to use in an Infinite Baffle. Now, um, we're going to let's show you what we're going to use for this. We're going to use the Ultimax series; they're very fantastic subs. We're going to use the 18-inch. I'm also going to show you the 12-inch as well. First thing that you want to look at is its RMS. Now, if you take a look at its RMS, it's going to tell you what its continuous power handling is. We want to take note of that. So this one is 1,000 watts. Um, we also want to take a look at the QTS. Now, I told you typically a QTS of 0.7 or higher is uh, a subwoofer that could be a contender for the actual open, I'm sorry, infinite baffle, but um, there's always exceptions to the rule, and this is one of those exceptions. In fact, this driver is a very versatile driver. If you don't have an Ultimax uh, subwoofer, I would highly, highly suggest them they they have the option of being able to be used in about any type of enclosure you want whether it be infinite baffles sealed or uh, of course a vented design and they work really well in all of them as well so let's take a look at this infinite baffle this is an 18 inch subwoofer so it's going to use a huge volume um, first let's explain this graph this graph this is the zero all right so that means that if we were in the most perfect room ever this subwoofer would be completely flat until it starts to tail off, which is right about here, which is 70 hertz. And then the F3 is what you'll hear about a lot of us, which the F3 is right here. This is going to be about 25, 26 hertz. The F3 is when it's three decibels down. Now, you can easily see that by going just to SPL. Now, this, if you notice, um, now this is before we put our signal in. So let's go ahead and put our signal input in. We're going to put 1,000 watts in there. All right. You're going to notice that it says 116 decibels, and its F3 is going to be somewhere around here. There you go, um, which is right there at the 25, 26 hertz range. So that means it's three decibels down. Now your driver is going to continue dropping off there. Uh, and a vented, it drops off much, much quicker. Um, there's going to be room gain and other things that are associated with that. But the most important thing to to keep in mind is that we're always looking for the lowest F3 that we want when we're looking for subwoofers for home theater use. Car and other, uh, other applications may differ. Now let's take a look at the box size with the Ultimax 18. We showed you this already. We're just going to assume that we're using it in a 200 cubic foot room, which is what we showed last time. And we're going to now... Um, take a look at a graph. Now we do want a thousand watts. Anywhere near there is fine. First thing we're going to look at is the cone excursion. Okay, This graph is very, very important when we're talking about infinite baffle. When you see this red line, you cannot go past that. If you go past that, you're going to have issues with your driver. So this is saying right here at 20, anything below 23 hertz, we're going to hit cone excursion, which actually is um, very bad for the subwoofer. So that's not going to work in an infinite baffle. However, most plate amplifiers, and actually most amplifiers in general that are for subwoofers, are going to have what they call a subsonic um, filter on there. Now that's just a high pass. It's typically around 20 hertz. Sometimes it's 18, and it's at a Q of 0.7 typically. So let's add that on there. We're going to assume that we have a subsonic filter on there. If you're not sure if your amplifier does, check your manufacturer. Uh, check with your manufacturer of the actual amplifier. So there we go. So we now have a subsonic filter on there, and you notice now it can take absolutely full power of a thousand watts, and you don't have to worry about any type of cone excursion at all. That's really good. And this thing's actually pretty amazing because when we increase the box size this graph changes, okay? So let's assume that we're putting it in a hole, like a basement, and firing it up, or an attic firing it down. Um, it actually has, no, that's 2,000. I mean, we could go 10,000, you know, and, and it still doesn't pass cone exertion. It's pretty, pretty crazy, actually. So that's a really good sub for that. Now let me show you the 12-inch, because the 12-inch, that may not be the complete case with the 12-inch. So once again, we're going to do this. Now, the 12 inch is a um, is actually only takes about 600 watts continuous power. So, oops, not 6,500, 600 watts. Now, you're already going to see it's passing that cone excursion like we said before, but that's because we haven't added that filter yet. So, let's once again add that high pass. Now, if you're, once again, 
we're going to use the user specified and we're going to do 20 hertz and we're going to add it there now look at that it looks like it falls in let me change the color so you can see that however it actually doesn't and i'll show you the reason why this is assuming a four cubic foot box now if maybe if you're in a trunk of a car that might be about right although even then you're probably closer to 10 cubic feet and then now you've crossed the line and now if we're emptying it into like another room 200 cubic feet or 2000 cubic feet now we're way over all right now there, there's a there's a chance you may not actually be in trouble here but for sake of uh getting this in there let's let's show you what you need to do you either need to decrease the box size which we've already showed you once we increase the box size it it goes out of whack or decrease the system input power so instead of using a 600 watt amplifier we could use a 500 watt amplifier once we do that we now have our cone excursion intact guys those are the two important things to look at if you look at something that uh, has a cone that's going way over there's one of two things you can do you can either add more filters like we did there with a high pass or you're going to need to eq it down now um, most people that are going to be running infinite baffle are going to be running in eq you're you almost always need to eq an infinite baffle um, and that's just kind of the name of the game for that so keep in mind if you are going to go infinite baffle you are most likely going to need to eq it all right, guys, I hope you learned something. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And as always, like the video and subscribe. Leave a comment down below, too. Um, and until next time, guys, thanks.